How many people are excited to what you saw in the video? We're going to do that in a month in your city. Are you excited about that? I said, are you excited about that? How many people are hoping that thousands of people will come? How many people are hoping that hundreds will get saved? How many people are hoping that hundreds will be baptized? I ain't hoping for none of that. Hope is not a plan. I expect thousands of people to come March 12th. I expect many to get saved. I expect many to get baptized. If you expect that, let me hear you lift up a praise to the Lord. You see, it will be easy to praise God after that day. But if you really want to start living in power and move from hope to expectation, it's strong when you could praise the Lord today for what he's going to do tomorrow. So let's praise the Lord right now for what he's going to do February 19th, what he's going to do March 12th. Come on, lift up a strong praise to the Lord. Everybody put up your hand like this and say, I. I can't hear you say, I am. Bro, your hand's not up right there in the front. Like, you didn't think I could see it? Everybody say, I am special because God made me. Point to four people before you sit down and say you're special. I said four people. Y'all pointing to way too many people. It is a really an honor to be here. I had lunch with your pastor, and we just clicked as brothers. But, you know, my prayer is that we do. We move from hope to expectation. I was looking at your faces when I came up here, and I looked in your faces, and there's faces of expectation. You didn't come here tonight hoping it would be a good service. You came here expecting. When you come to this church, you expect it to be a good service. But you see, many of us right now in the body of Christ, we hoping. In the 20s, there was a 10-year drought in Texas. 10,000 Christians came together in a tent to pray for rain. Only one old man brought an umbrella. They weren't expecting rain. They were hoping. We need to move from hope to expectation. Because we serve a God that you don't have to hope he's going to move. You know he's going to move. you got to expect him to do something great. You have to pull on that anointing and pull on heaven. But you see, if you really believe that God is going to do something powerful at that wow jam, then the depth of your belief is reflected in the excellence of your preparation. I'm going to say it again. If you really believe God's going to do something powerful, then the depth of your belief is reflected in the excellence of your preparation. And it's our job to prepare the way of the Lord. So I've come tonight to get to know you, share a little bit of how we're going to prepare for that day. You see, I expect a lot of people to come, so we're going to bring a lot of hot dogs. I expect people to get saved, so we're going to bring hundreds and hundreds of Bibles, English and Spanish. I expect people to get baptized with their clothes on that day, so we're going to bring swimming pools. We're going to blow them up. We're going to baptize people right there out in the open. I expect that. I expect people to get healed. I want the worst drug addicts. I want the worst gangbangers. I expect them. I don't hope they come. We're going to invite them to come. I expect them to come. Now, there's going to be a lot of people that come for different motivations. They're going to come to get free stuff. We'll have a lot of free stuff. They'll come to get food. They'll come to sell drugs. A lot of wild gems, they come to shoot me. I tell them, I don't care why you're here. But God wanted you here. And God got your big dusty head here, and now you're here. But we have to prepare. We have to prepare. Because if you don't prepare, don't, don't think God's going to do something. He's waiting on you. He's not waiting on him because he's ready. 
He's not waiting on the sinners because the world is hungry for Jesus Christ. He's waiting on you. And the danger of a big church like this, the danger of a great church like this is you can get lost here. Because you can be telling, man, you ought to see what my pastor did. Ooh, you ought to see what my church did. God's not going to ask you what your pastor did. He's not going to ask you what your church did. He's going to ask you, what did you do? What did you do? And my focus in our ministry is to fill you with the power of God. I know everybody here believes that God can move through your pastor. He can move through this worship team. But you've got to get to the point that you believe that God can move through you individually. You got to get to the point, but you believe he can do miracles and deliverance through you personally. That you don't have to be in this building to let God move in you, because most of your life is spent outside in the world. He can move through you, and that's when we start to see incredible things. And so we want you to be trained. We want you to be equipped. We've already your church has already put a great team together. They're getting permits. We got a location. We were there today praying over. It's a great location. We're going to give you thousands of little flyers like this tonight. Pass them out. Everybody's going to get 20. Pass them out to everybody you know. It's going to be a great big party. It's going to be all free. We're putting teams together. We want you to go on the app tonight and register for a team. We're going to do all kinds of things to love people unconditionally. We're going to cut hair, give haircuts. We're going to fix bikes. You're a little kid and you don't have a father and your bike's broken. Life's not very cool. But Jesus cares about your bike. You see, if we don't care about something, we can't tell people that Jesus cares about that. So we have to approach them holistically. We're going to have a dress-up corner for kids. We've been all, we're, we're always in the worst parts of the city. We're in New Orleans. 2,800 kids have been killed there over the couple of years. And, and, and you ask a kid, what do you want to be when you grow up? They used to say, I want to be a gangbanger and have a car. You know what they say now? I want to be alive. I don't think being alive should be a goal and a dream. I think that would be an accepted fact. So we're going to bring them in twenty and say, what do you want to be? We're going to dress them up like a doctor or a lawyer or a nurse. And then we're going to take a picture of them. Then we're going to pray prophetically over them and give them that picture. Because, see, you got to see something with your eyes to believe it in your soul. you got to see yourself. I can be something more than people have told me. I say we. I ain't going to do that. You're going to do that. This, that day is about you. Because the greatest resource they have in this church is you. Is you, the people. And we're just going to love people. My wife started a makeover tent. Go in there and we're going to give you a beautiful makeup job and do all that stuff that y'all do. <laughs> but it's not that at the end when I preach that God moves. He moves from the very beginning. Some guy came in. I was telling Pastor Armando. Came in with his girlfriend and three kids. They've been together forever. And they said, you get makeup and I'll go get a haircut and they all got together about a year, uh, an hour later, and he came up, and he looked at his girlfriend. He said, you're beautiful. And she said, no, I'm not. He goes, yeah, look at yourself. And she did, and then she started crying, messed up her makeup. And then he got on his knees and proposed to her right there. The whole family got saved. They got married. That was years ago. They still married, serving the Lord. Every tent is a ministry tent. Every tent is a ministry tent. We don't have no secret prayer tent. People say, where's the prayer tent? I say, where are you? What tent are you in? I'm in the food tent. That's the prayer tent. You see, we try to specialize. We try to say, well, that will God, that's what God will move. And the kingdom of God is over here. But the Bible says the kingdom of God is in you. And wherever you are, that's where it's going on. Because here's what's happened. If you're in line, you go up to somebody. Wow, I see you got a little bandage on your arm. Can I pray for you? Nobody turns down prayer. Even people that don't believe in God, they don't turn down prayer. Here's what happens. So I pray for you. The lady behind her goes, can you pray for me? You're praying for her. We got to get out of the hidden places and go to the public places. And if you can get drunk in public, get high in public and shoot people in public, we could pray for people in public and see them changed. So that day is about God working through you. And so we want you to sign up for a team tonight. You can sign up for the bicycle repair team. You can sign up for the food team. You can, we have a plant booth. A lot of people are growing illegal stuff. We're going to give them something legal to grow. With a little scripture in it 
And we've been doing this. This is 30 years we've been doing this. And I'm going to tell you, God, 60,000 plants. There's so many testimonies before, about that. We're going to do a family photo booth where we're going to pose them real nice. You're going to take a family photo of them. And then within two weeks, you're going to hand deliver a framed photo photograph to their house. It's all about relationship, this, guys. It's not about a big sheet of like we did this and this and this. It's a, these are vehicles to build relationship. And if I'm not mistaken, this church is about relationship, relationship, relationship. So we have all these booths that's going to happen. So, the, so we get there. So Friday night before the kickoff, uh, before the wild gym, we're going to have a monster kickoff rally here. We're going to share. We're going to sing. Then we're going to get our face and we're going to pray. Because I played football my whole life. I discovered that the game is won the night before you play the game. If there hadn't been a Gethsemane, there'd never been a Calvary. Jesus dealt with things internally at, at the Garden of Gethsemane so he can deal with things externally Saturday. So we are going to get the victory the night before. But before that, and you'll get these dates, they're all on your app. Everybody say app. All the dates, we're going to pass out flyers. We're getting 20,000 more little club cards you can carry around. Then we're going to get 20,000 big flyers. Put them everywhere you can and just tell people this is a big free party and so we'll have some training I won't go into that tonight but we're going to just equip you because I want you to walk out there confident, equipped the Bible says the evangelist equips the saints to do the work of the ministry so y'all are going to do the work and trust me on this we have to do our job we were in Florida and this couple made 15,000 hot dogs in the last four days and I said thank you for making them hot dogs. And they said, no, no, it was God. Let me tell you something. 30 years, I ain't never seen God make one hot dog. Now, one hot dog. He ain't fixed one bite. Holy Spirit ain't cut nobody's hair. It's a true partnership. He'll do what only he can do, but he won't do what you can do. And you can't do what he does. But together, we can take this city... We can take this country, and we can take this world. That's why we're called, wow, winning our world together. So we want you to sign up for booths. We want you to pass out flyers. There's going to be a setup crew. It's going to be an incredible day. Let me tell you, it starts at 12. The first two hours, music's going to be playing. All the tents will be set up. Hot food will be going. Everybody gets a ticket because the stage will be covered with bikes and TVs and boom boxes and radios and all kind of cool stuff, kids and adults. Everything's in Spanish and English. Everybody can go to whatever tent they want. Then after about two hours, when the Holy Spirit says it's time, we just flow out there. When he says it's time, we close everything down. Then we start on the stage. We're going to sing. We'll shoot 300,000 pieces of confetti over the crowd. You saw it. We'll have a dance contest, a singing contest. It's, we're going to have fun. Okay, it will be fun. And then when it's time, we're going to do a powerful drama. Then I'm just going to straight up preach. And I expect people, little kids, teenagers, and adults to come forward and accept Jesus Christ that day. Oh, y'all ain't clapping like you believe it. You're clapping like you're hoping. And so that's what a wild jam is. And we won't go to any city unless they commit to five years. So me and Pastor have been dreaming up some great things. We want to just keep doing this together and build a great team. We hope next year over 500 interns from around the country will come to your city, to your church, and learn how to do it. That's what's going to happen. So great plans are in, in, in operation. But the preparation is important. We want everybody to buy a t-shirt. We want to all have Wild Jam shirts. And we're going to have your church's logo on there because we're together. And so there's a lot more details. But that's kind of it in a nutshell. Do you feel you kind of got, got what you needed to get? Okay. They said I have to quit by 11 o'clock, so, you know, I got three more hours. So it's all about, he said, you got time. But it's all about loving people unconditionally. And we live in a society today that's so polarized. No matter what you say, somebody's going to hate you. And some of you have run out of love. Some of you Christians have been doing outreaches You just because you're just tired of crazy folks. And that's just the ones in your family. I'm not even talking about the street. And you get run out. You will run out of your money. 
you'll run out of your love, you'll run out of your compassion, because your love and your compassion won't save nobody. But Corinthians tells me, it says, but the love of Christ compels me. It's the love of Christ, you see. That's what we have. The love of Christ. You're tired, but it pulls you out of bed to go do that visitation one more time. The love of Christ. No, I'm tired of that. But the love of Christ compels me. I don't have no choice. I got to go on the 19th and knock on doors. Why? Because why? it compels me. It's an action word. And what did it compel us to do? It says to tell the world, God says, I'm not mad at you. I've been around the world many times. Just about every country from the jungles of New Guinea to Germany to Africa to Brazil. And I discovered it's not that people don't believe in God. They just think God is mad at them because the church is mad at them. Seemed like the church is mad at everybody. But we've come to tell you, God's not mad at you. He's not mad at you. Your debt's been paid. You're forgiven. We just come to tell you, take it, man. It's there for you. It's there for you. But everything we do leads to salvation. Even healing. I said this the other day at a wild gym. People got mad at me. I said, you can get healed and still go to hell. You don't go to heaven because you're healed. You go to heaven because you're saved. So everything we do leads to salvation. So I really hope and expect and know that y'all going to show up large. And we're going to have a great day. And we just want Wow Jam to just be a little part of what you guys do all year long. So we are excited and we're excited and expect great days. So what does it all come down to? We could be intimidated by what's going on in the world today. We think that we don't have enough. But you see, there's a lot of people giving out a cold, cup of cold water. But the Bible says if I give out a cup of cold water in his name... All of heaven's behind that cup of cold water. See, so you got all of heaven behind that little smile. All of heaven behind that. And no matter what's in your hand, God will use it. Anything you give him, he will use. And it's not always the things that we think are the big, deep spiritual things. There's this one woman. Her husband died. He was everything. Within eight weeks, she's addicted to drugs. Within a year, she lost it all. She's prostituting herself. Arms all cut up. She was a mess. So woke up Saturday morning, she goes, this is it. I'm going to kill myself. If there's a God. You know how many people are saying that, right? If there's a God. She said, and she thought of the hardest thing. Give me a big screen TV. And she wasn't being slick. Because she, she, if I don't, I'm going to kill myself. So she came to the wild gym. I believe it was in South Central. Where 82% of children will see a murder before they reach the age of six. We're there. She came that day and she looked around and she had a hot meal and they gave her makeup. And, and I preached my guts out. Tons of people got saved. Nothing. It was at the end of the day. I had one more ticket. Thousands of tickets. One more ticket. See, she didn't need a sermon. Thousands of tickets. I pull out this ticket, call the number, and I hear this person screaming from way in the back, screaming. And she's running, running, screaming. And she runs on the stage and falls on her knees and hugs the TV and goes, there is a guy. I'm going, lady. <laughs> it's just a TV. She goes, you don't understand. I said, no, you don't understand. It's just a TV. I already gave the altar call on baptisms. And then she told me her story. There's people out there that just said, if somebody would be kind to me today, if somebody would just look at me and treat me with dignity, if somebody would look at me and not look somewhere else where they could be, if someone would look at me at what they could give me and not what I can give them, then I'll know there's a God. That's the only way they're going to know there's a God. Through you. You say that's a big responsibility. It sure is. You've got to live your life like somebody else's life depends on it because somebody else's life does. So you don't come to this church just to get filled up for yourself. 
you come here and you study a little bit harder because there's people out there that you got to bring this water to. So bring a big, not a bucket, bring a big truck when you come to this church. You come to all the things they have to offer so you can get bigger and stronger because there's people out there that can't make it here tonight. And they're dying. And it keeps me up at night. I thank God for the half a million people I got saved, but I got a long way to go. Long way to go. And they put their guns on the stage. They pour out crack cocaine. We have people that go through human trafficking. They come to the outreaches. And God's going to use you. He's going to use you. And he's going to work through you that day. That day. And let God use you that day. And take that with you everywhere you go. And no matter where you are, we were at the lunch today. And, and, and we were about to pray. And Pastor Armando said to the waitress, we're about to pray anything you can pray for. And then she just breaks down in tears. Please pray for my brother, Sean. Didn't even ask for herself. Please pray for my brother, Sean. She was just weeping and praying. And Jen, we invited her to church. That, that's the way we're going to win the world, y'all. So it's about being open. And it's about knowing that we got what the world can't give you. Oh, it's nice to say God will bless you with a new car and all that stuff, but how about if you own 10 Mercedes? You don't need a car. You need Jesus. Jesus. I'm going to close with a story about two girls, two young girls. One, a beautiful young lady, smart, graduated college, got her law degree, Good girl. Had everything you can imagine. Was Miss USA in 2019. Runner up in Miss Universe pageant. Worked for a law firm. Was uh, one of the correspondents on Extra TV show. A couple weeks ago. Chastity Christ. Her last text that day was, hope you have a day of peace and rest. And she threw herself off the 29th floor of a luxurious Manhattan apartment complex. And they found her body in the dirty street at 715. And she, on her Facebook and stuff, said, you know, I, I make sure I have a balanced diet. And I make sure I, I rest. And, and those all things are good. But you see, you're going to hit a wall when none of that stuff works. Oh, it's nice when you feel bad to go shopping. Not for your husband, but you make it nice. There's, all those things work. But you'll hit a wall when none of that stuff works. And this, we're, the world is realizing nothing is working. She didn't know that she can call on Jesus. She's dead. Another young lady. Grew up, rural part of town, young black girl, what's she going to be? She loved to sing, though. And she sang, and all of a sudden she's discovered, and she sells nine million records, three number one hits. She was Peaches with the group Peaches and Herb, sing Reunited and Shake Your Groove Thing. Don't act like y'all don't know that song, because you know you were grooving that song. Traveled the world. Voted most beautiful woman in the world three times. The covers of magazines. Had everything you can imagine. Yet found herself on this 26th floor of a hotel about to throw herself out. But the difference was she called on God. God sent somebody in, in my life. He sent me. I start producing her record. I was a record producer. We fell in love. And next week we celebrate 33 years of marriage. It's my wife. I want her to come up and sing her newest single. It's already over a half a million on uh, Spotify. I'm so proud of her. Give my wife, Linda Peaches, a big hand. This song called, It Never Ends. How many know his life never ends? Come on, sweetie. Give her another big hand, and you can start up that track right now.
Make some noise. Don't just sit there. The celebration. How many times can a heart be broken and still want to love again? How many times can you get knocked down and still want to get up again? Never thought I'd find my way, then one day I met you. It never ends. You may be seated. <clears throat> That's her new single. <clears throat> it's not even out yet. <clears throat> but we made up a bunch of CDs. It's her new EP. So it's about four brand new songs on there. You can get them at our table in the back. And also get a bunch of these flyers. And uh, there's a bunch of our music that we've done. A bunch of albums together. But pray for her because she's relaunching out and touring now. Doing clubs. Getting interviewed. And she's always talking about the Lord. And so, uh, and she's going to be at the Wild Gym, so tell people, hey, man, come and get reunited with the real peach. Listen to me real quick. So you could be here tonight. Be honest with yourself. You may come here all the time. It's your first time. Whoever you are sitting there, you may be in a situation where you've tried everything. You don't know what else to call on. Let's be honest for ourselves. Life is desperate. This fits perfect. You don't have to listen to anything I'm saying. I don't have to go a long time because I discovered when people are hurting, you don't need to take 20 minutes to let them know they're hurting. You just need to give them the answer. 
Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. And his abundance is different because he'll give you a favor money can't buy. But the bottom line is you're going to die one day, y'all. When you stand before God, he don't care who your mama was, where you went to church, what color your skin is, none of that going to matter. The stuff that matters on earth. He'll say, did you accept Christ as your Savior? I want you to close your eyes, bow your heads, not to be holy or reverent, but I want to think about you and you alone, where you are in your life. Tomorrow's not promised. We're prepared for tomorrow, but it's not promised us. My wife had everything, everything you could imagine. But she didn't have Jesus. What good is it if a man gains the whole world but loses his soul? Elton John said in an interview, I would trade everything I have for one hour of peace. Jesus says, I give you my peace. The world can't give you. So however you are tonight, in the back, wherever you are, and you say, Mister, I need Jesus. I need to accept him as my Savior. When I die, I want to go to heaven. But when I live, I want to live and be everything I'm supposed to be because you know you were born for more than what you are. And you can't let your life be defined by your disaster. Your life is defined by your destiny. So if you're here tonight, simple as that. Say, mister, I need to accept Jesus. This isn't to like pray for my mom or I have a stomach ache. This is I need to accept Jesus as my Savior. If that's you, just put your hand up right now, whoever you are. Just put your hand up. Put your hand up high. I'm not going to wait a long time because either it's you or it's not. But you know it's you. And so if your hand is up, I don't make it easy. If your hand is up, just stand to your feet and come down right now. Come down because i got to close this service in five minutes. Come down right now to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Come on. You know who you are. You know who you are. When you're hungry, nobody got to tell you you're hungry. Come on down. Come on down. Who else? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. A year from now, we don't care if the Rams won the Super Bowl. We don't care who won the lottery. But right now can change your life. Who else? Who else? Come on. Come on. If Peaches needs Jesus, I know you do too. But this is the real reunited because it does feel good. <laughs> It does feel good. Who else? Way in the back. You're going to say, well, what are people going to think about me? Why do you think they built this church just for you? They've been waiting for you. They went out and got you. Come on down. Who else? Okay, I want everybody that came down to look at me. Counselors, for a minute, don't talk to them. Look at me. Everybody look at me. Is that why you're here, sir, to accept the Lord? Is that why you're here? You sure? You're here to accept Jesus. This ain't to win a car or nothing. This is, I'm a sinner. I want Jesus. Are you sure? Your friends are going to make fun of you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Your, friend, your friends are going to make fun of you. You still want Jesus? They might beat you up for this. You still want Jesus? Look at me. Didn't have such a great relationship with your father, did you? that's been hurting you when you were a little kid man. this isn't the way you thought life was going to be is it but tonight I want you to meet your heavenly father he's a king is that why you're here you to accept Jesus yeah I just want people to know what they're doing maybe it's a little different than what y'all do is that why you're here you sure because you did some pretty bad things in your life. No, look at me. Yeah, right? You should have been dead like three or four times, shouldn't you? Look at me, right? Yeah. But you're not. You're alive. And you made it. Hardcore right there. Mm-hmm. Hardcore right there. Because it's one thing when you fail in life, 
you, you know you need Jesus, but when you succeed in life, it's harder. You're a smart man. And you knew that you were born for great things, but you ain't done that yet. You here for Jesus? You sure? Because you're not going to be the same. You're going to have to stop doing some of the things you've been doing. You got me? You, we good? I'm just telling you this because I love you, man. All right, I ain't going to keep going down the line. Look at me. Some of you are crying. I won't even tell you. He wasn't supposed to be alive. Some of you are crying, and it's okay. Some of you don't feel a thing. It's okay. Because your salvation is not based on how you feel, but how you believe. And the Bible says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and risen from the dead, you shall be saved. Y'all still want to accept Jesus? I'm trying to make it hard. Okay, y'all stretch your arms out to these people. I want you to be able to pray this prayer with me. Then I'm going to turn it over. I want you to, you to pray this prayer with me. And believe in your heart. Believe, 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 believe. Oh, it can't be true. It is, man. Say, dear Jesus, I'm down here not to make any deals. I'm here because I'm a sinner. I don't blame nobody else. I sin, and I'm sorry. Would you please forgive me? Take my brokenness, my hurt, and my sorrow and make something beautiful out of my life. Dear Jesus, there's some people that really hurt me. I forgive them. Oh, see, some of y'all couldn't say that. Because <laughs> you're saying you don't know what they did to me. But you need to understand forgiveness is freedom for you. Say, Jesus, I forgive them. Bless them. Now take this pain from my heart and fill me with your peace. Fill me with your love. I serve you, Jesus, to the day I die. And when I die, I know I'm going to heaven. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me. I love you. I love you. I love you. Amen. Would you welcome them into the family of God? Come on. Come on, can we give God some praise tonight? Can we give Stephen Tavani a big round of applause tonight? How many are ready to go out there and just be the hands and feet of Jesus and let everyone know about how good his love is? Thank you so much. We just want to let you know this Sunday is going to be an awesome service. Don't miss this Sunday. And if you're a young adult, if you're single, you're dating, you're engaged, newlywed, we have relationship seminar this Friday night here in this room at 7 p.m. If you want to come on out, we got some amazing guest speakers for the next three weeks. Relationship Seminar, be here Friday night. This Sunday's gonna be an amazing service. Remember, Stephen Tavani and Peaches, they have product. She's got her single outside in the foyer. If you wanna support them, please go buy some of their stuff. Support them tonight. We love you so much. Remember this, if God is for you, there is no one who can come against you. God bless you. Have an amazing time. If you need any prayer coming up, we would love to pray with you. God bless you guys.